Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. This is Model Tech. Today, I'm bringing you a video on setting up a Flux node on this awesome device. If you're new to Flux, Flux is a blockchain that powers a decentralized computational network. The network has two sides. One side is GPU mining that will be focusing on the proof of useful work. The other side is no running. Currently, the nodes have two purposes. One is to verify these transactions on the blockchain. Two, they're providing computational resource. Previously, I've explained that when you run these nodes, you will be rewarded in Flux tokens and Flux coins. Flux is a partner with NVIDIA, and at the same time, it's also a partner with one of NVIDIA's official vendor, Seed Studio. And this device I'm using to make the video today is actually made by Seed Studio. The long-term goal is to have a plug-and-play, easy-to-manage device so non-technical people can make nodes. Due to the recent chip shortage, I decided to order the device itself so I can get it shipped out as soon as possible. And then I bought my own RAM and MEME storage. So there are a bunch of videos online showing how to set up a node, but some people may say, I don't know how to SSH, I don't know how to do this and that. And it's just really inconvenient for me to having to get in the console and manage the node and check the status node all the time. So today I'm gonna show you a easier way. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, we're here to talk about popular tech product services and projects. If you find our videos valuable, please subscribe to our channel and like our videos. For every like we receive, $1 will be donated to one of the charities of our choice each month. You can check our previous donations under our community tab. You can also support the channel by signing up for Crypto.com using my referral code MOTOTECH. I use Crypto.com almost every day. I even have one of their Crypto Visa card that gives me a bunch of staking rewards and travel benefits, including airport lounges. If you sign up for one of these cards using my referral code, you will also be getting $25. Again, you can sign up by going to Crypto.com slash APP slash MOTOTECH. All right, first thing, we'll be taking this thing apart. On the outside, you have aluminum box. And this is the power button and you have a restart button. And here you have the antenna port 1234. Certain version of the RE server also have the Wi-Fi card comes with it. But I had to buy the Wi-Fi card separately. I believe it's something like $40. It will also be able to support lower WAN. If you're familiar with the Helium blockchain, you will know what that is. At the same time, it can support 4G and 5G too. Here we have the power plug. We also have a USB 2.0 and a USB 3.0. We have a mini display port and the HDMI port. And we also have 2.5 gigabits per second ethernet port, two of them. This device was initially built for edge computing and that's why you see these specifications. So in the box on the board itself, it has a main processor. It's an Intel 11th generation i5 1135G7. It has four cores and eight threads. So it will be enough for us to run Cumulus nodes or one Nimbus node. It also has a building graphic card. It's an Intel Iris XT Graphics G7. It's more powerful than a dedicated GTX 950 mobile graphics card. So let's open this up. I'm unscrewing the bottom screws. There are a total four of them, two on each side. After you unscrew this, you can just pull the top you can see this is what it looks like internally. Right over here, you also have a SIM card slot. In the front, you will be able to see two slots that are designed for hard drives and SSDs, SATA SSDs, and there are two SATA ports. So if you don't wanna use MEME, the SATA ports are perfect. They're cheap and they can meet the benchmark. So now we're going to unscrew four of the screws on the top so we can take out the housing for the hard drives. Now those four screws have been taken out. So you can pull, you have a full size for hard drive or you can use a screwdriver to stabilize these small hard drives or SATA SSDs. So we're gonna put this aside we're gonna pull the second one, and that's right, you can put two of them in. So you don't have to use Wi-Fi card if you're using Ethernet. Ethernet is actually what I recommend. I'm only doing this Wi-Fi for the demonstration. So next, I will be installing the MVME card. I have a half terabyte card. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're putting the RAM. So these ones are 16 gigabytes. So total, it will have 32. It can support up to 64. Push it down at an angle, make sure it's seated all the way, and then push it flat. Uh, by the way, this thing has TPM 2.0, and that means you can run Windows 11 on this device if you decide to. And that's why I really like this device because it's basically a mobile computer. For some of you guys who's only gonna be running one Cumulus node, you can actually use this device 
to run a Windows operating system and then maybe run a Hyper-V type one hypervisor with a bridged network interface, but that will be out of scope of today's video. So we're going to close this up. And don't forget, if you're using Wi-Fi, make sure to connect these two antennas that came with the device. Now we just flip up the antenna. So next we need to do is go to Ubuntu's website. We're going to download the Ubuntu 2004 server. I will have the link in the description below. Next thing we need to use a software to burn this ISO onto a USB. The software we're gonna be using is Molina Etcher. So we'll be choosing the Ubuntu 2004 image and the, for the target, we'll choose the USB we just put in and you'll click flash. Once that's done, unplug your USB drive from your main computer and then plug it into the USB 3.0 port on the RE server. Connect the RE server into a monitor and then hit the power button. All right, as I'm pressing deleting key, I'm waiting for the BIOS to come up. There we go. You can see this is a normal BIOS most people should be familiar with. And go to next page. I wanna check the power management. Make sure on AC power loss and when you gain power back, it will automatically turn it back on. And if there's a power outage for even one second, it will be able to power it back on by itself. And then you go to the last page. Make sure go down to boot overwrite choose the last one uefi usb save configuration yes and you hit install ubuntu server so you wait for a little bit let it do its own thing in about one minute we enter this install window and for me i'm going to choose english and then i'm going to hit done so here you see two ethernet ports if you're using ethernet it will give you an ip address already and for me, I'm using Wi-Fi. You go to edit Wi-Fi, go down to choose a visible network, and then put down your password and hit save. Hit done again, hit done again. This step, I'm gonna uncheck this set up this disk as a logic volume group. Hit done again. Most likely you won't have to adjust anything here. So hit done and choose continue. For name, let's say MT, server name, Flux, pick a username, MT. Make a very secure password. Hit done. And make sure you check this box, install open SSH server, and then hit done. Go all the way to the bottom. Hit done again, and let it install. You can see on top, it says install complete. And at the bottom, you can choose to cancel update and reboot, or you can still wait for it to finish updating. For me, I'm gonna wait for it to update because we're gonna have to do it later on anyway. Once update it's done, at the bottom, it will give you a reboot now option and you can hit reboot now. And it will tell you to please remove the installation medium and that's where you remove this USB. Hit enter. As we can see, the OS is booting up now. So, so far, the guys are pretty much similar to most of the other existing guys on the internet, but we're about to branch off from here, which will allow you to have a graphical interface to set up your node. And then once you have reached this login, go ahead and type the username you just created. For me, it will be MT and then put in the password. If you're new to Linux, remember when you put in the password, it will not show on the screen. But after you put in a password, you can hit enter and it will let you enter the system. Before we switch over to our main host computer, make sure you remember the IP address that's showing on the screen right now. You see IPv4 address, for WL01 is 192.168.50.114. This will be different for you. And then we're going to type in this command to install a software that will allow us to remote manage it with a graphical interface. Typing sudo apt install cockpit. If you're familiar with Linux and Linux administration, you should be familiar with this tool already. Again, typing your password and hit enter. Hit yes. Now switch back to your main computer. So on top of the browser on your main computer, type in the IP address I ask you to remember and then colon 9090. This will bring you to this page and click advance and say proceed to this. And now you can see we have a graphical interface to manage our node. The username will be the username you just created. For me, it will be MT. And then you need to type in a password and hit login. Once you have logged in, you will see a dashboard and all these features for you to manage your device. So I really like about this 
interface is you can monitor your CPU, memory, network, disk IO, all from one glass of pane. You can monitor your host. You can see all the details. You can see if there is any service that has failed. You can check the logs of your machine. And here you can even choose what type of logs you're looking for. You can also monitor your storage. You can check out your networking. You can check out all the services you have. So overall, it's a very convenient tool. You can also directly access terminal from here without using SSH. To run Fluxnode, currently you do need to enable pull forwarding. They are working on the multiple nodes from home. It sounds like soon they will be able to release the solution. But before that happens, you can one, run your device in the DMZ. If you only have a cheap router, you may not be able to do that. So in that case, you will have to use pull forwarding. Each router is different. I will demonstrate how to do it on my router. So first of all, I have to pull forward from port 16124 to 16128. And then I'm forwarding it to my device IP, which is my node IP. And then I do the same for 30,000 to 39,999, also to this device. And then for single port forwarding, on the original guide, it had port 53, which is DNS, and then port 80, which is web service, and then port 443, which is HTTPS, and 123, which is network time protocol. And they said it was only required for outgoing. And I know for me, all these ports, they are open for outgoing in the first place. So you don't have to forward any of those ports that's under 1024. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these two and hit apply. Again, all I have forwarded are these two, and now I'm gonna hit apply and hit okay. So before we go any further, you have to make sure you have downloaded and installed the Zellcore wallet. I'm not gonna explain the detail about this wallet, it's out of scope of this video, but I will post the link of the website in the description below. So to run these nodes, you will have to have collateral. The new requirement for the collateral of Cumulus is 1,000 Lux, Nimbus is 12,500, and then Stratus is 40,000 Flux. So when your Zellcore wallet receives a transaction of an exact number of, let's say 1,000 Flux, it will automatically generate a node and give you a transaction number for you to use to set up your node. So the way to show up your Flux address is to click Manage Asset and click Add Asset. And then you choose Flux. And then on the right, you can click Show Zero Balance. And this will show your Flux. So to do a live demonstration, I'm gonna choose one of my wallet that has Flux in there. It will be my mining wallet. I click Flux. And then I'm gonna find out my own address. Click Receive. You click to copy your own address. And then you click Send. For me, in order to send any transaction, I have to put in a pin. And then you right click here to paste your wallet. You can see I have over 2,000 flux. We're gonna send ourselves 1,000 flux and click send. It says proceed with transaction, yes. The next step to make sure a node is automatically generated, on the left side, you click more, and then you can click flux nodes, and then you will be able to see a node like this, and it, but it will say offline though. However, this is, uh, once you click a dropdown, it will give you the number of confirmations you have. You will need 100 confirmation at least to set up your node. You can set it up without it, but it won't be able to run until you have at least 100 confirmations. So it's a good idea to start this early. And when you click edit, you will see the private key, collateral, transaction ID. These are two strings you will need later on for the setup. All right, let's go back to our management web GUI. Let's go down to the bottom where it says terminal. In this terminal, you put in a command sudo apt install npm-y and wait for it to do its own thing. Once that's done, I'm going to clear this window and we will paste the multi-tool command, which I will link in the description below. It will ask you, do you want to paste? And you say, yes, allow. Hit enter. The first step we need to do is install Docker. So hit one, enter. It will tell you you need to be root in order to install Docker. So typing sudo su hit enter, which will switch you over to root. And then paste the same command. Again, hit enter. Hit one, enter your username. This is the username you used to set up this Ubuntu. If you don't remember, on top of here, it will tell you slash home slash MT, and that's my name. 
So I'm going to put MT. Enter. And it will install Docker for me. Would you like to switch account? Say yes. And then it switches back to your original user. Clear the screen by typing clear. And then pasting the same multi-tool command again. Hit enter. Go to step two. Install Flux node. So hit two. Hit enter. Are you using port 22 for SSH? For most people, that would be yes. And then you wait for it to install the package. So now it will ask you for the private key generated by the Zelcor wallet. So go back to the node dashboard where I showed you how to get your transaction ID and private key. Click on edit. And then you just click on this private key, which will copy your private key. And you right click and paste and hit OK. And then you will ask for your collateral ID. And this will be the second string over here. Click on it. It will automatically copy. Right click to paste in here and hit Enter. And then ask for your collateral output index. And this is a number under the collateral ID. For most people, this will say zero. So putting zero and hit enter. And then it will start configuring. Next step, it will ask you, where do you want to download a bootstrap? So the bootstrap is a snapshot of the blockchain, which will help you speed up your blockchain sync. In this case, we're just going to use the building script. And based on our current network speed, it says it's going to take about 13 minutes. So we're going to wait. And while we're waiting, we can go over to the networking tab and we can see the send and the receive network traffic. We can also go to storage to check out the write and reads. And this is why I like this graphical interface because I can tell if there's D app hosting on my node, if it's being actively used without having to SSH in and logging and push a bunch of commands and uh, keys. So after downloading the bootstrap, it will start unpacking the bootstrap and this will be much faster. You can choose to remove the bootstrap file to save some storage. I'm going to hit yes. Next, it asks for your Zell ID from Zell core. It says go to apps and Zell ID. So they're talking about go to apps and then top right, you can see Zell ID and then you click on this code. Go ahead and right click and paste it and hit OK. And then if you're a Nimbus node and above, you will have the option to set up a Kadena node. If you're setting up a Cumulus node, you can skip this step. So to find your Kadena address, go to the portfolio you want to receive your Kadena. Click into Kadena and click on receive. Remember, this is Chen Zero ID. And then you will have this address start with cake. Make sure you copy this. Go ahead and paste that address in. Hit OK. And we said it was Chen Zero. Hit OK. And now we're continue to wait. Next, it asks you if you want to enable alert notification. I don't really care. So I'm going to say no. Then the wait continues. All right, guys, after it's done, it will show us this is a Nimbus node. And if you're staking for Cumulus, it will say it's a Cumulus node. As I stepped away for a little bit, it's already been up for about 10 minutes. And down here, I'm going to copy this address, which is my public IP address, and paste it up here. We can go ahead and save. I do want to show you for your first time setup, your interface may look a little bit different. You may also see a start button here, and that's when you have enough confirmations, which is at least 100, you will be able to hit start and start your node. So one last step before we close this out, let's clear this first. We want to make sure that we can continue using this web interface to manage our node. With this method, you can even pull forward 9090 to your main router and set it up at somebody else's house and remote manage it. One thing that happened during the installation was they added a bunch of rules. We can check what ports open by typing sudo ufw status. And the port we're looking for is 9090, as you can see above, but we don't see it in here. So we need to type in sudo ufw allow 9090. So now let's check again, sudo UFW status. And we see 9090 being added to the rule list. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. We will have more Flux guides in the future. If you have questions, feel free to join our Discord and post them there. I'll have the link of the Discord in the description below. Other than that, thank you for watching. This is Modotech. I will see you next time.